Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Heather and on this channel I talk about dating, relationships, and marriage and how to prepare for marriage from a faith-based perspective. So if you'd like to see more content on those topics then definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. So in today's video I am sharing 20 non-religious reasons to wait until marriage to have sex. And I really wanted to make this video for a lot of different people, but especially for those who either don't subscribe to faith or they're new to faith and they're wondering, should I even wait to have sex until marriage? Is it worth it? What is the reason other than the Bible says so? So if you're having those thoughts and questions, then this video is for you. I also wanted to make this video for those of you who may be waiting, but you're struggling and you're kind of at that point where you're sort of wanting to give up and you're not really sure if there's really a good reason to keep going. Some of these reasons are my own from my own experience and some of them are from what friends have shared with me from their experiences. Just a couple of quick disclaimers. This is not to shame anyone who has not waited. I did not wait and that is one of the reasons that I really wanted to share this because I know from personal experience how damaging it can be when you don't. So if that's you, then definitely don't look at this as me shaming you in any way. This is just to share my experience and hopefully encourage you on your own journey. So the first reason is thinking of future generations. So we all know that our actions affect those who come after us and one of the ways that having sex outside of marriage can affect one generation to the next to the next to the next is when we have pregnancies outside of marriage and those relationships don't make it and then you end up with a single mom or a single dad raising this kid and that's not the ideal situation if that's you again this is no shame to you I know so many wonderful amazing strong single moms and dads but I think we can agree that that was not the way it was designed to be kids really need a whole family and one of the ways that we can help protect that is by saving it for the confines of marriage where we know that the other person is going to be there through that pregnancy and for that child. And reason number two is unwanted pregnancy. Pregnancy should be one of the most exciting things that you ever experience. You don't want the anxiety of worrying about whether the other person is even committed or not. Speaking from experience, I know like how difficult pregnancy can be even in a marriage, even with a committed partner. There are so many emotions involved and so many ups and downs and so much preparation. It's something that you want to really know you have a partner in that way. And the third reason is STDs. And that one kind of speaks for itself, but if you are having sex outside of marriage, then you have to worry about whether you have contracted an STD, whether you're giving an STD to the next person, and that may even affect your future marriage. Whereas when you're waiting until marriage, you don't have to worry about any of that. The fourth reason is that when you have sex with another person, you become chemically bonded to that person. You don't want to be bonded to someone who you're not going to be with, who you may end up breaking up with tomorrow. There's actually this thing called oxytocin, sometimes called the love hormone, that's released into the body when we have sexual intercourse with another person. And it can create a strong emotional bond to that person. And a really alarming thing about oxytocin is the more sexual partners that we have, the more the effects of this hormone tend to decrease. And that's a bad thing when you're thinking about getting married to your future spouse and wanting to have that forever bond and that chemical connection. And then on the flip side of that, you really, really don't want to be chemically bonded to someone who is wrong for you. The fifth reason is that it's a way of honoring yourself and it's a way of maintaining your own value and self worth. And that's something that the right person will also in turn honor and respect. Number six is that you don't have to worry about comparison. You don't want to go into your marriage with all of these other sexual experiences that you're comparing your spouse to. And again, if you have already had sex outside of marriage, it doesn't mean it's too late. That was my story. My husband and I had not waited, but we chose to wait for each other until our wedding day and experience that for the first time together. 
Number seven is it's also a way to honor your future spouse. What a beautiful gift that you could give to your future husband or wife. And just think about if a marriage is honored and respected before it even exists, how much more honor and respect you'll have inside that marriage. Number eight is that it makes relationships way less complicated. Anytime sex is involved, it's going to heighten our emotions and it's going to cloud things. It's going to make it hard to know how you really feel about someone because you've already had this intimate connection with him and it can make you feel closer to that person than you actually are. But if you don't have that in the picture, then it helps you to be more clear-minded and to make more clear decisions. Number nine is that you don't have to wonder if the other person is just in it for the sex or they just want your body. That will be taken completely out of the equation and you can know that they love you for you. Number 10 is that you have no worries about past memories of sexual experiences with previous partners or exes. This is one that a friend shared with me who had been happily married for many years and said that she would still sometimes have dreams about her ex-boyfriends who she had slept with. And that's something you really, really don't want to have to deal with in your marriage or even in your singleness. You don't want to be attached to those exes and to those past memories. Number 11 is that when you wait for marriage, there's no shame. There's no feeling like you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing. Number 12 is that you get to experience love in its purest form when you wait for marriage and for that person that has fully committed their life to you. And you have the safety of that relationship and that commitment to experience this amazing thing with. Number 13 is that when there is no sexual intimacy, then you have more room to build a meaningful connection and relationship with that person because you're not distracted by a sexual connection. You can focus on a really meaningful, deep conversation and real connection and know that it's not just physical. Number 14 is that when you've had sex with someone, it just makes it that much harder to move on from a breakup or a heartbreak. When I went to college, I was a virgin and I even went to a Christian college, but it really didn't make any difference. I still got teased and called a prude for never having had any kind of sexual relationship and I really got made fun of for it. And if I had had a stronger sense of value and worth and really meaning behind why I was waiting, then I probably wouldn't have given into that pressure. Um, or even if I had just had a stronger group of godly friends, but unfortunately I didn't and I did give in. And when that relationship ended, it took me years to move on because I had literally given part of myself to that person. Number 15 is that waiting helps to build trust and marital faithfulness. When someone has shown you their faithfulness outside of marriage that they can wait to have sex with you, then it really just solidifies their faithfulness in the marriage as well. And that's one thing that I have never had to worry about in my marriage. I've always been confident in his faithfulness to me. And I've heard that from lots of other women and men as well, that they felt a stronger sense of that faithfulness and trust because it was built before they were even married. Number 16 is that when you're having sexual intercourse with someone, it can actually act like a band-aid in that relationship and cover up potential problems or make you overlook some of those red flags and maybe even stay in the relationship way longer than you should. This is another one um, that happened to me because I felt like, well, I have already slept with this person. I've already given myself to them. How can I move on to someone else? I, I kind of have to stay with them now which I know now is a very flawed way of thinking, but a sexual connection can cause you to do that and cause you not to think clearly in those areas. Number 17 is that it allows you to focus. When you're in your single season, you don't need that distraction of sex keeping you from focusing on yourself and the things that you want to work on. Number 18 is it allows you to practice patience and sacrifice. And those are virtues that you're going to use all throughout your life and especially in marriage every single day. Number 19 is there's no pain or regret from giving yourself to someone who later just becomes an ex and doesn't end up being the person that you marry. And I've heard people say, well, you've already lost your virginity, so what's the big deal? Might as well keep 
having sex with other people, right? No, that is so wrong for so many reasons. And I can tell you, like I said before, having sex outside of marriage was one of my biggest regrets. And it's never too late to change the way that you live. I remember several years ago, I had a friend who was getting married and I was at the same time going through a really hard breakup. And I remember sharing with them that I was going to recommit myself to Christ and that I was going to wait from then on for my future spouse to have sex. And I remember my friends at the time, fiance, making fun of me for that and saying, oh, are you going to be a born again virgin? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But you know what? I have never once regretted that decision. That is one of the best decisions that I ever made was to recommit that part of my life and decide from then on that I was going to save myself regardless of what had happened in the past. And you can do the same. Number 20 is that you don't have to, have to wonder if that person is going to be there the next day. When you're in a committed marriage relationship, then you know you're gonna wake up to that person and that they're still going to be there for you. And you don't have that constant fear of wondering if they're gonna be gone the next day. So that is it for this video. Again, this is not to shame you if you have not waited, but it is to encourage you and let you know that I understand I've been there and it is never too late and it is so worth it. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have anything that you would add to this list, then definitely leave that in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.